Now, if you were asked where your stomach was, you'd probably point to your tummy. Sorry, but that's wrong. It's actually up here, hidden behind your ribs. Your stomach has a pretty incredible capacity, being able to hold up to a half a gallon of liquids. That's a whole large bottle of Coke. It's pretty hard to estimate how much hard food you can eat, because it's processed with your teeth before it ever gets to your stomach. There's definitely not enough room for a turkey, but a good-sized chicken would probably fit it in. Speaking of organs, scientists believe that the appendix will disappear eventually. Nobody really knows why we need it, but some researchers claim it might have existed to help our ancestors digest tree bark. Because it's no longer a part of our daily diet, the appendix isn't necessary and can disappear from our bodies without any consequences. Now, the appendix isn't the only obsolete part of our body. Wisdom teeth aren't that useful either. Yeah, they used to come in handy when our ancestors lost some of their teeth. But the only thing they help us lose now is the money we spend extracting them. In fact, you can easily survive without your appendix, stomach, one kidney, or one lung. <laughs> nice to know we have spare parts. If you never knew you had a personal bodyguard, look deeper. Your liver is your security guard, protecting you from toxins and many other things you don't want to have. It's also pretty indestructible and can even regenerate. Your liver is a very important organ that works a lot and is responsible for 500 individual functions. Up to 10% of it is made of fat. The liver can grow back. Yep, even if you only have half of your liver left, it can still regenerate to its original size. Now, on average, the heart is as big as your fist. It beats 115,000 times and pumps around 2,000 gallons of blood each day. The right lung is bigger than the left one because your body needs to make some room for the heart. You inhale a lot of different types of debris, including 7,000 of your very own skin flakes, and that's only in a day. The stomach is the most important defender of the immune system. Hydrochloric acid in our stomach kills dangerous food toxins, viruses, and bacteria that get in there with the food you eat. This acid can digest even the stomach itself, but the mucous membrane protects it. You can burn calories when you take a hot bath, as many as you would if you took a half-hour walk. You burn somewhere between 100 and 200 calories per hour while standing. Sitting burns 60 to 130, depending on your height, weight, gender, and age. Now, your own body makes mosquito bites swell and itch. A mosquito breaks your skin. Your immune system perceives the insect saliva as a foreign substance, so it starts a special reaction to flush the intruder out of your body. A compound produced by the immune system, called histamine, makes the blood flow faster around the bitten area, and it causes swelling. The histamine also sends a signal to the nearest nerves, which makes the bite itch. Meanwhile, the food on the plane is likely to taste different than on the ground. That's because you lose up to 30% of your taste bud sensitivity due to the dryness and pressure in the cabin. It's especially true about salty and sweet foods. Now, you wouldn't be able to taste food without saliva. Your taste buds have chemoreceptors that recognize different flavors, but they need some liquid for those flavors to bind into their molecules. Also, you can't taste things saliva doesn't dissolve. You can always squeeze in some dessert, no matter how much salad, soup, or meat you've eaten before. Your body gets bored of savory tastes, but when you see and smell something sweet, like ice cream, cakes, or chocolate, your brain gets excited. It overrides all fullness signals for pleasure. Plus, your stomach is a flexible organ, and sugar helps it relax and physically make room for dessert. Hey, I rely on that information. The tongue is one of the strongest muscles in your body. This organ contains more than 10,000 taste buds, and each bud is filled with microscopic hairs. Their job is to sense your food, distinguish tastes, and send information to your brain to initiate the appropriate digestion process. During your life, all those tiny bumps and ridges on your tongue create a special individual pattern. That's why experts say that tongue prints are as unique as fingerprints. Your tongue doesn't have separate bitter, sweet, sour, or salty sections for tasting. Each of the 8,000 taste buds you have on the tongue, the roof of the mouth, and even in the throat can detect all the tastes. For some people, cilantro may taste similar to soap because the plant contains a chemical used in soap making. 
But only 4 to 14 percent of the world's population have special genes that can detect it. The masseter is the strongest muscle you have based on its weight. Together with the rest of the jaw muscles, it can close your teeth with a force of 200 pounds on the molars and 55 pounds on the incisors. Your spine has a great memory. It remembers your posture, making it so difficult to change it for the better. You owe goosebumps to your ancestors from many, many, many years ago. Their hair used to stand up to make them look bigger and scarier to foes. Cats hiss and arch their backs for the same reason. A human mouth is pretty unique. You won't find two identical sets of teeth even among identical twins. That's because the shape depends on how each person is using their jaw. Even the tiniest habits you used to have many years ago, such as lip biting, affect the formation of your teeth and the uniqueness of your dental impression. You've probably noticed that lipstick prints on a napkin or a mirror are always slightly different depending on who left them. Alright, who left the lip print? Studies of both females and males revealed that lip print patterns for each individual are unique. They didn't reveal any special traits based on the gender factor. The mandible, or the lower jaw, is the only skull bone that isn't fixed to the bone around it. It's attached with connective tissues and muscles. This is what makes it so mobile. You can move it in any direction you like. Only about 43% of you is actually you. Over 50% of the cells in your body belong to tiny little creatures that mainly live in your gut. Still, even though your own cells are fewer than the microbial ones, there are, on average, about 100 trillion of them in you. See? You're not alone. With this in mind, your own genes are less than half of what you really consist of. If you take all the microbes dwelling within your body and count their genes, you'll find between 2 to 20 million. Now, our height, the shape of our body, and skin color depend a lot on where our ancestors used to live. But we can adapt to new conditions even within our own lifespan. For example, if you move from the plains to the mountains, you'll eventually develop more red blood cells to compensate for the lack of oxygen. And naturally, if you move from a colder climate to a hotter and sunnier one, your skin will get darker to adapt. Our lifespan is programmed within our cells. They constantly review and divide, but they have a sort of internal timer that stops at some point. Some cells also stop reproducing sooner than others. On average, cells cease dividing when we reach the age of 100, if we're that lucky. That means that if we could find a way to trick our cells into turning off the timer, we could potentially live forever and move in with our grandchildren. <laughs> there are clusters of sensory cells in your tongue. The buds that are closer to the surface are more short-lived. That's the reason you don't have to wait for too long to be able to taste again after burning your tongue. Your fingertips are sensitive, but hundreds of times less so than your lips. Ah, the lips again! 